Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to give you my thoughts about the LK4X 3D printer by Longer. Without further ado, let's get into it! This is the new West 3D printer by Longer and I have to say straight up that I'm impressed with the future that you get with this $300 3D printer. I have received this machine free of charge with the uh, request to review it. However, I'm not being paid for this review and as usual, you know that I like to keep my reviews unbiased. Therefore, all of the opinion that I'm going to provide you, uh, they are going to be my honest opinion about this product. Now, this is an entry level 3D printer with a volume of 220 times 220 times 250 millimeter and is primarily targeted to hobbyists or those who want to put their hands on 3D printing. But this machine is packed with a bunch of features that I was not expecting uh, for machines at this price range. Now, you get auto leveling, filament runout sensor, uh, PEI magnetic flexible bed, and almost a plug and play package. Now the design is typical for this uh, uh, low-hand FDM Cartesian 3D printer, although I like that they went for uh, one side aluminum profile which makes the machine look more professional than the standard 2040 profiles. And the other cool thing is the fully enclosed extruder and the 4.3 color touchscreen over to the side. Now, the assembly is the easiest I've seen so far and it truly comes 95% pre-assembled and pre-wired. It only takes four bolts to connect the Z-axis with a gantry to the base and a bunch of other bolts here and there to connect the display, the spool holder, the runout sensor and the leveling touch sensor. Then it's all matter of plugging the electrical connector which are already pre-routed and labeled next to where they need to go or where they need to connect. So really, it couldn't be easier than this. All right, let's now talk about uh, the various features of this machine. First up, we got the auto leveling with the touch sensor. So after a manual leveling, which you do through the knobs under the bed, that's done to eliminate the largest levelness deviation, the machine will basically go through 16 points grid to check and compensate so that uh, it will make sure that every print will be perfect. This is great not only because it compensates for levelness but also for uh, flatness. So if you don't have a perfectly flat bed, that is going to be compensated uh, by the machine. Now, the second thing is direct drive extruder. Now, this is nothing special to me because all of my previous 3D printers have had a direct drive extruder. But having had experience with one Bowden extrusion machine, I believe that going with direct drive uh, as the perfect solution when it comes to FDM 3D printing. And the things get even better because this machine comes with a dual drive uh, system which means your filament is going to be driven more consistently. The other thing that I like is that uh, it has an enclosed uh, extruder module and inside of it we find two cooling fans plus duct so that will help basically cool down your part as it's being laid down. Another feature is the filament runout sensor and as the name suggests it senses if the filament runs out. So this will basically pause the machine and wait until the new filament is pushed through and resume printing. The X and Y axis are built in simple belt tensioning so that will make it easy for you to adjust the tension of the belts. Then you get a PEI magnetic flexible pad. This is great for strong addition and easy of removal of your prints. In fact, uh, the specific material uh, will basically uh, grip onto your parts and then will release them as it cools down. Finally, the machine has a power loss recovery system that will basically remember the last executed point. So upon uh, repower, you can then resume. However, with this feature, there is a small uh, drawback and that is because of the a PEI bed that we talked earlier, which is going to basically release your part as it cools down. So the uh, power loss recovery system is going to be good if you're there around um, and restart your machine uh, upon power restart or uh, if the power outage is uh, short. 
All right, let's now talk a little bit about the performance or the capabilities of this uh, 3D printer. Now, before any print, actually before your first print, you will need to go through the leveling process. That is warming up the bed and then also to printing temperature. Uh, so the PLA preset available uh, on the filament section will be perfect for the purpose. Then you will need to go for manual leveling so as to get uh, the bed as flat as possible manually. And finally, uh, you can perform the auto leveling. There the machine will prompt you to set the uh, Z-axis offset and then it will automatically go through the 16 uh, points grid. The first model I printed was the included pre-sliced Benchy with a few meters of included black filament and I have to say it turned out great. Now I had a little bit of additions issue uh, despite I had already cleaned the bed with isopropyl alcohol but after uh, tuning the z-axis offset I was finally able to stick to the bed. And in fact you can also see uh, with this single sheet test that I made uh, how it came out consistent and perfect and it was perfectly uh, stuck to the bat. Then trying printing some vase, of course in vase mode, and I got a tons of blob. Now this problem can be drastically reduced with a better quality, higher quality SD card. In fact I swapped um, to a SunDisk Ultra 32 gigs and as you can see the result is way way better. Now it is not perfect but for now, I simply wanted to try the performance of the machine out of the box without much tuning. I then printed a knight from uh, a chest set with a 0.2 mm layer height and it looks good. However, I had some imperfection in the Z direction. So I've decided to print the calibration cube, cube that was provided in the SD card so that I could verify the deviation. And it turns out that I had a 19.5 mm cube that was supposed to be 20 millimeters tall. So I basically had to run in a little bit of tuning, I had to correct the uh, z-axis unit step and to do so I used the uh, prompt phase terminal to read and edit the EEPROM stored parameter. So after that tuning uh, the machine basically started to stick to the bed and to uh, produce overall better results. I then printed a bunch of other things and I got good results in most of them. Just had the problem uh, with the printing place or assembly models, but that is because you need to test and fine tune the clearance and tolerance of your machine and correct the models accordingly. To finish, I printed an all-in-one test with default settings at 0.3 millimeters layer height to see how much tuning we need to get it right. And as a result, um, we didn't have much stringing, bridges were great, and we can go unsupported overhang all the way up to 60 degrees. The only issue that I found, it was a little bit of over extrusion for the top layer, which can be easily solved through the slicer. Now, as a software, Longer does not offer proprietary software. They include a version of Cura Slicer, as well as the configuration files for the machine and the filament. Now, I'm not fancy for Cura, I don't like to work with Cura, I prefer Prusa Slicer, which in my opinion offers a better interface and more slicing functionalities. But Cura is equally capable for most projects, so it is just a matter of preference. So after setting up Cura, I copied the G-code blocks uh, in the Prusa, and I also commented out the auto-leveling function at the start of every project because I feel it is unnecessary. I in fact do suggest running auto leveling every once in a while but not on every print. Alright, let's now get into the pros and cons. So that is what I like, what I don't like and I will also add what I think it should be improved. Now as I said at the beginning it is a very affordable machine and for $300 you get a very easy to use and capable 3D printer. All the features you get are pro especially the auto leveling and run out sensor. It is very easy and fast to assemble and set up and pretty much ready to go out of the box without much tuning. The printer is quiet, it's very silent and that is I guess because of the silent drivers that they use. In fact the only noise it makes it comes from the fans which are still relatively quiet. Now what I feel it should be improved, the bed is great for both addition and 
ease of removal of your prints, but the thick magne magnetic sheet separating the heating element from the bed means that there is a lot of heat that is necessary in order to heat up your bed. So um, I think that the bed should be redesigned a little bit so as to maximize uh, the thermal flows where it needs to go. And so with it, uh, I also would suggest to apply a little bit of insulation on the bottom part of the bed. The Z-axis is driven by a single lid screw although for such a small machine should be not a problem having a gantry driven on both sides would be a plus so this will basically prevent and even pulls on the long run all right so what i didn't like well there wasn't much that i didn't like the only no that i have is about the spool holder i mean the spool holder is okay but it looks very weak and it wobbles especially with one kilograms of spool and so, in my opinion, it is prone to break, and if it does break, it's going to cause a greater damage down where this pool is going to fall. All right, we have finally reached the conclusion. So, should you buy it or discard it? Well, I think that my video have already answered that. So, taking into consideration all of the features that you get, the price, the cons, and the pros, I would definitely go for it. So if you're looking for a capable, easy to start budget 3D printer, the longer LK4X, it's for you. And if you're wondering about the size, well, that depends on what you are expecting to print with this 3D printer. But to tell you that in my eight years of experience with 3D printing and 3D printing functional stuff, a 200 millimeters cube 3D printer has always been sufficient. Then, to tackle larger project, you can always break down your uh, design into multiple parts, into smaller parts that can be assembled afterwards. However, if you still feel that uh, the 3D printer is small for you, uh, then Longer offers larger 3D printers from the same series. And this is pretty much all. Now, I hope you found my video helpful, informative, if you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the thumb up button below and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more video like this one. Ciao for now.